and I mean this as a compliment, not an insult. I pulled up to the venue, and there were so many cars at the venue, I actually thought I was at the wrong place. I said, <laughs> I said did I, is, am I at the right joint? Hey, it, it happens, you know, you start on that side of the fence when you're nobody, and all of a sudden you fall on the fence with the dog as you get chewed up, and you're, you're in newspapers yeah, and everything. we actually even ran out of seats at that We event. did. Uh, sold out event, and next year to be more so, but... I was collecting toys for this uh, when I was allowed out. And, of course, I'm going for the cool toys. I'm not going for the crappy toys that are out there, the Pokemons or whatnot. I'm heading right for the Star Wars toys. And I'm forgetting the fact that I need to be getting toys for little girls as well. And I got these, and I put them. I said, oh, I didn't get anything for the little girls. I got to get some of these toys and empty them out of the box. Well, actually. And Nurse Misery corrected me and said, Star Wars is for little girls. Yeah. Exactly, my, that's exactly, and, as soon as you started to say that, that's what And that's the say. point yeah. I'm trying to get to, where Batman has its characters that are faced towards girls, like Batgirl and uh, the supervillains, but Batman not so much, and Superman, not at all. Even though they try really hard to make that happen. You they did. With they them, especially with the Man of Steel. They tried really hard to cross-market to women. And it didn't happen. They had to raise another character, Supergirl who is now getting bigger in popularity, but still not as big as the Man of Steel. They did try and really make Lois Lane seem like an empowered woman that can hold her own, right, but, but she right, always had to be saved. Right, but right, but Charles <laughs> is saying that the heroes themselves, himself, yeah. Superman himself is the franchise. Yeah. Yeah, and he's hinted and toward he's men. Like, exactly. And that's exactly why Disney bought Marvel, because Marvel... Is based towards little boys and grown-up little boys, where Disney's princesses are based towards females. Because before Marvel had become Disney's property, Disney was lacking that multi-gender grab that they needed. I mean, they had stuff like Jack Skeleton and, uh, you they know, Pirates of the like, Caribbean. Yeah. But it was nowhere near the strength of some of their main title Cartoons that were loosely, and I'm not going to say loosely, they were heavily based towards the female gender. Right, and, uh, young, and young kids. Yes, so then they go and buy Marvel, and now they have toys, rights, and comics that gets them both. And then they buy Star Wars, which is advocated for both sexes. So it's a neutral thing out there, and I never would have thought that growing up as a kid because I thought it was only something uh, the boys were into. And, and I think originally like it was. I mean, the first couple of movies, I think it was, because, you know, I, I right. mean, my memory might... You know, Until the Ewoks came, and then it's all over from there. It was, I had to be a really dorky little girl, because I love Star Wars and Star Trek You are a stuff. dorky big girl just by saying you love Star Trek. And this is the battle of the ages, ladies and gentlemen. Star Trek <laughs> versus Star Wars. Can you like one or both? We'll I get like back both. to that in a second. This song is definitely made for that. Battle of the Heroes, and right off the Star Wars theme album. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a little prelude. <laughs>
I would be remiss, and I would not be any of a nerd if I didn't mention we are putting up Battle of the Heroes. If I didn't mention the ever so popular franchise, which has been rebirthed, the Battlefront franchise, which is up on the next gen systems. Unfortunately, 360 and PS3, you don't get this game. It's a little too big and has uh, too much of that fancy computer stuff that your systems cannot handle. I'll, I remember Battlefront 1 and 2. Great games, offline, and you had online stuff, but many, many hours of losing my life to this game. And the same happened with this new one, Battlefront 3. I didn't think I would like it because it is mostly online, and when you go online with uh, playing video games, there are a lot of, um, there's no short terms of words for this. Can I say the D word? Oh, the yeah, so. uh, There are a lot of dicks on this stuff, and it, it, it doesn't change. There are folks inside there that the minute they have this game have not stopped other than to take a piss or a crap or to go eat while they're doing it. And they're already up to sickly levels that are uncompetitive for someone like me who has a life. For a graphic illustration of this, see the episode of South Park. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to compete, but yet it's still fun. It's one of those games where if you get killed, it doesn't really matter. And it picks up on... The original Star Wars, which Battlefront 1 and 2, they added the episodes in, which was fun far as the vehicles go, but not as far as the heroes. But this one, oh, it goes right into New Hope, Return of the Jedi, and The Empire Strikes Back. No precursor and no aftercursor. So it's all the stuff I grew up in. And it's funny hearing the kids ask, like, and there were some young kids on this stuff, that this is their first experience into the original Star Wars and they're miss saying the ATAT or the ATST they're calling them the wrong things and so us older folks here myself back in our days have gone to call them nicknames for them so they can understand a little better like the two-legged chicken walker so now they know it as the chicken walker or the four-legged walking cow which we all know is the monster yeah, that's just one more small thing that I have that irritates me about George Lucas is what kind of a, like, who the hell scrambles a franchise so that you don't even know what the hell you're talking about when you say the first Star Wars movie, second Star Wars movie. I mean, right away, I mean, if, we, if you even try to talk about Star Wars, you're in this chronological mess. You are, and you have to uh, really separate yourself from that. And I haven't found, if there are any, send me your thoughts on this, anybody that favors episode one, two, or three of the originals, usually I, when I talk to someone, even the 501st gentleman, they will say that those don't exist. <laughs> That's how bad they are. And I don't see anybody cosplaying I'll anybody you, from those areas. I'll tell you, if you can get yourself, not you, Chuckles, but if anyone in our uni listening universe can get themselves into a state of mind where they can genuinely deny the existence of the first, well, those three Star Wars movies of which we speak, I want what you've taken to accomplish that because it does. It just annoys, as our producer Tony Jones says sometimes, it just shakes my space-time continuum. <laughs> We've rubbed off on him. The nerd style has gone there. Now, we step back and we say that, and unfortunately, those were the first three movies that I sat and waited to see, and they were such a flipping disappointment. The first three, the first, the, the I was, episode one didn't convince you not to wait for the other two? No, because I hoped that there would, just like a new You had hope, a new hope. <laughs> right, there would be better coming, and after the second one, I'm like, oh, the third one's got to be better because I got Darth Vader coming into it, and man, was I wrong. Well, I'll tell you, I'll give, now, I hate these three movies as much as you do, as much as most Star Wars fans do. I will give a little bit of credit. Was the name of the kid that played the young Darth Vader in the Anakin, the Anakin. the kid that played him? Yeah, yeah. the actor. Um, he tried. I mean, I think you know he really you know he did a, as good a job as he could do with a really crappy story, a really crappy script, or, you know, bad direction. I mean, he tried to make Darth Vader evil. He tried to make Darth Vader convincing, and actually, I give him credit that he made. Darth Vader convincingly evil enough, especially when 
he kind of took out his lightsaber and you know off camera, but he still did it. Slaughtered all those little kids. Oh yeah. The Darth Vader that maybe the Darth Vader that cut off his son's hand could see the light later on. I doubt it, but maybe. A person who would murder a room full of little kids with a lightsaber is not going to leave the dark side anytime soon. He, no. he just isn't. It so just, that so he did give him give give him props for the acting. Give him, you know, all he did was make George Lucas look more like an asshole. Right. I mean, for the, for his future plot developments, that's that's what he did. And, and New Hope was excellent. That was well, it was the it was first a, Star Wars movie I saw as a kid. It was the first produced Star Wars movie. Let's how, how would right. we put it that way? And it was an excellent flick. There's nothing more that I can say about. Yeah, that. but it wasn't called the New Hope, which is a. I hate that name too. Right. It was called Star Wars. Yeah, but they have to put the I, title in of, there. Of course they do because of what they this what they did. Head out of his ass backwards. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how they chronologically order this so that people will remember which is which. Because <laughs> you don't want to start off and say the first Star Wars, someone automatically goes. And then, and one. then, and then the son of a bitch goes and digitally enhances. Oh, uh, worst uh, thing ever. Them. What you know? Hold on, Simpsons. Worst thing ever. It's got to be. I mean, and then they tell us, "This is it. This is the last copy. This is what you get." So you you're can't not going to the theatrical yeah, version. You like, can anywhere. You have to go to a flea market and look for a VHS, right? Yeah. And a VHS and player hope that is and old a, enough of a VHS because they did the VHS yeah. re-release. Right, you have to. They do, did. Right, you have to blow the dust off a VHS player. Yeah, and you have to find a soiled, beer-stained VHS copy from. I'm not sure what the year would be, right? Because. It was a while. We're talking a while back. Yeah, because yeah. they originally came out on Betamax. Right. So and I don't know anybody that has a freaking Betamax player around me. So I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of the first produced Star Wars movie. I'm not sure if I'm willing to invest in a Betamax player to see it again. I'm no. Not, yeah, I don't no. know. I used the Betamax as a boat anchor. True story. <laughs> while we were out fishing because I had nothing else to use. And, well, that thing was worth shit and wasn't playing anything. So I used it as a boat anchor. Little did I know it would be useful to play. Uh, the original Star Wars. I probably wouldn't have stopped myself anyways. No, you would have done it. Yeah. And I don't even know how I got a hold of that because we didn't own a Betamax in that insane asylum when I was a young child. 